Hi, it's uh, Kevin May, the Editor-in-Chief for Focus Wire here. So one of our partner interviews, I'm joined by Greg Abbott, the uh, Senior Vice President for Travel and Hospitality at Data. Hi, Greg. Good and uh, George Lucas, you're the uh, partner at Hudson Crossing. So thank you for joining us. Right, so thank you. you two have been working together, well, your two organisations have been working together officially with this project for over a year now. Um, just explain to us what it entails, what's, what's come together and what are you doing? Yeah, sure. Um, so it is our anniversary. Thanks for mentioning that. But actually, we've been working on the path for several years of collaboration together, where we're addressing the challenges that organizations are, are facing from strategy to design to development. Um, it was born out of uh, Hudson's approach, really, on the business strategy side uh, and our, our approach to development and the intersection around designing the right thing for customer needs in the customer market. And we found ourselves intersecting at that point quite a bit. Um, and after several collaborations, we realized we had a lot of synergy. And I think we've been working on honing that for the first few years, and then we made it official uh, just last year at Focus Right. Okay. So, I mean, what you do is help organizations kind of tackle some of the problems that they have. I mean, George, in particular, I mean, what kind of pain points do you think you know, the CTOs and the CIOs are facing generally in the industry at the moment that you're trying to help them with data up? I think that um, a, a personal observation is that probably for the last uh, 20 years that I've been in the business, I've seen, I used to joke that if you ever want to find out where the old original IBM PCs are, look in the back office of any hotel. Right. You'll find the most antiquated technology and faxing and all sorts of things that you would just never put together with large companies. And that's turned around. We went from almost a static industry in terms of technology and deployment to one that over the last four or five years is starting to get on a rocket ride. And so the, the issue is, you know, A, how do we change and take advantage of these technologies? And every company is different. No two companies have the same strategy. We could work on competitive strategy for three arch competitors and based on their assets, the types of resources that they have and what they want to do, the answer is completely different. So we focused a lot on trying to help companies understand what to do with the new technologies and capabilities. And as Greg said, it, was, it starts with strategy and then you have to design something. How is it actually going to apply to the organization? And then actually making it happen, the so deployment. The implementation at the end of it, which is where you come in, right? Yeah, so I think the, 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 that, that sort of area around, we actually were approached by companies which will remain nameless, but the product strategy was perhaps not the right product strategy or not well thought through. And so we go ahead and implement and execute really well, but the product's still a flop in the market. And I think we have a passion for building stuff that's going to be successful. And by taking the time to really think through the approach to market and the strategy, which we see uh, clients doing with the help of Hudson, um, we get to build stuff that works. So how do you, George, I mean, how do you help the tech heads, we call them at the moment. We've been doing this theme month around tech heads and the, the, the technical leaders within the industry. I mean, how do you get them to focus on kind of prioritizing you know, products and whether it's going to fit their markets or not? That's a really good question and it, there's a really broad answer. It's, there are so many different states of readiness that companies are in. And we do, uh, we've been doing a lot of product strategy lately where a company will say, we have this product and you know, we thought it was going to be a winner, but it's a flop or it's, you know, just barely getting along. What did we do wrong? And we have a very worn in and well tested process where we don't use things like surveys and focus groups. We go out and have one on one interviews with potential customers, whether it be B2B or B2C. We gather a lot of primary data and we have trained product people who, you know, can take those needs and translate them into a solid value proposition that's matched to what the company can do. So sometimes companies will try and go into an area where they don't have the resources to execute later on. Mm -hmm. And that's dumb because right. they're just wasting <laughs> their yeah. time. Exactly. So we, we help to try and get that match in the value proposition between what your customers need and want, the jobs to be done, and how you're going to resolve that with a product. Okay. But companies are ambitious and they hear a lot of I don't know, buzzwords as we would call them. I mean, how do you kind of rein those ambitions to just do something because they think it's the next thing that they should do? Well, we certainly try to 
separate buzzword bingo from actual technology that can be applied to solve some of the problems that, or to capture some of the opportunities that are uncovered uh, during the strategy phase and, and the design phase. So I think, uh, you know, we try to help companies understand that certainly technology is going to play a key role in the solution, but the actual strategy and design of that solution and the approach and the methodology are as important, if not more important than the selection of the right technology. And, and George, finally with you, I mean, would you say it's, you know, just thinking about new technology and the implementation of it has got easier or not over the years, just because it's maybe a little bit more off the shelf or you've got organizations like DataArt that can do what they do. Do you find the conversations are easier with, you know, hotel brands, for example, to use that example that you mentioned right at the beginning? Um, I think the yes and no. Um, the yes part of it is, it's almost like if you look at um, um, athletic performance now versus 20, 30, 40 years ago, all the records are being broken again and again and again. And it's not because we're, we're building better humans, it's the training and the nutrition, everything is getting better. By the same token, there are more capabilities from technology perspective in the marketplace, uh, cloud native systems, microservice architectures, those things are enabling companies to do lots more, but they're also, a very different model and getting your head around a which of those should we be taking advantage of and how should we be taking advantage of them can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. So yes, they can do lots of great things that they never could before. Right. Performance, scalability, all those things are embedded in these new systems, but you have to turn the ship and get your people to start thinking in that way and taking advantage of those uh, development uh, methodologies and, and how to get there. And I'd add to that too is that the number of projects that we've completed across various sectors uh, allow us to take the approaches of those technologies and leverage them onto customers that we're working with in the future. So there's an advantage to sort of the breadth of, uh, of different clients that we get to work with. Okay. George, Greg, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.